Welcome to Oatana Public Library and to the Secrets of the Library Tour. Today we're going to look at some things in the library you may not know about or may not have noticed. And hopefully you'll hear some stories you haven't heard before either. We have a photograph here of when the library was opened in 1900. Have you noticed? It's pretty much the same. A few changes, such as there are um, lights and railings on our steps. But if you look up at the building itself, at the very top, oh, excuse me, above the, the lentil, there is, we always tease that it's pronounced public library because that U is shaped like a V. Um, when the architect had, was, was looking at this, he actually referred to it as a U because it was the classical style to do those things with uh, using bees were interchangeable. Down below the lentil is the free to all, and that is the motto of the library, even at this point, that we are a public, public library that anyone can come to use and that our services are free to, to those who come. We would like to go inside these front doors, which right now you're not able to go in because of our our limited accessibility, but just for this, we'll get to go in the front doors. As we come into the library doors, I want you to notice the, the mosaic on the floor here. Um, the small tiles make up a laurel wreath, which is also a, a Greek symbol that would be used in this classical architecture. And let's go on inside. As we come into the entryway, Take a look up and you'll see a, a plaque that is a tribute to Elisha and Elizabeth Honeywell. I have some photographs here of both Elisha, there he is, and, and Elizabeth. Elisha and Elizabeth moved to Oatana from the New England area and they uh, had a hardware store downtown on Bridge Street. But they must have done very well because, well, plus they didn't have any children. <laughs> but anyway, they had and they had did they had done well enough that after Elisha passed away, and it was Elizabeth's will that then they that they had discussed, and the money from the estate was divided three different ways. It was put into a, a children's home in South Dakota, the St. Paul's Episcopal Church, just a few blocks from here, and the, the third part of the estate would be given to the city of Owatonna if the citizens would agree to, to build a public library, a free public library for people to use. Before that time, there had been libraries for certain groups, uh, the Women's Christian Temperance Union had their own uh, different churches had their own libraries to downtown and storefronts, and, but there wasn't a public library that, for everyone to use. So it came to, after Elizabeth died, it came to the city council to decide if they were going to accept the conditions of her will. Part of the conditions were that they had to agree to keep the library going for years, uh, that they would support it financially. And it, this, the election was held. The city council felt like the, the residents of Oatana needed to have their voice in this. So an election was held, and it was the first time that women were able to vote in the city of Oatana. They felt that the women needed to have a voice in this election. So the, the final vote was about 96% in favor of building the library. And with, based on that, a young architect who grew up in Oatana, Frank Gutterson, was hired. And he, along with both Carl Bennett and James Ford, they, they made plans for how the library would be laid out. Bennett and Ford actually went and traveled in several states in, in the Northeast trying to get ideas of what the library should look like. They wanted to have one that would be built so that one person could theoretically handle the flow of traffic. And we'll see when we get inside how they work that out. But Frank Gutterson um, was here a lot. 
because he actually grew up about a block away from here. And then he went on to finish his career in, in Iowa, where he built other libraries, and including the state library for the state of Iowa. When the library was opened to the public on February 22nd, 1900, at 2 p.m., the people flowed into the library for a formal dedication. And they, they reported to the public that the cost of the building, including the furnishings and books, was $31,000. Um, when the library was opened, there were 4,000 books. Now, or within the last two years, it would, we have about 122,000 books and materials here at the library. Um, the, when the library was first open, this was as far as you could get. You could not get any closer to the books. Um, the bookshelves were, were about in that location, um, but people were to come up to the library desk and tell the library worker which book they would like or what they wanted to learn about. The librarian then would go get it and bring it back to the desk. People couldn't go look. Well, if you can imagine, they didn't appreciate that. People wanted to be able to browse and see exactly what these 4,000 books had in them. So uh, it didn't take, it was just a few months and the railings were down and people could go back and choose their own books. This section of the library is the reading room, but we have a section here of the old ends from the bookcases that were in the original library. Later, we'll show you a photograph that shows people sitting at the tables here with lights on each table because they didn't have um, ceiling lights in, in the library. The main floor of the library was heated by two fireplaces, one back where the bookcases are located and then another one here in the reading room area. Uh, this was a very popular place. It still is. When the library reopens, plan to come in and, and have a seat here by the fireplace and enjoy the warmth in the winter. We have, over the years we've been the, ben, the we've received many gifts from benefactors. One of the, the largest ones was in the 1950s when after a, a bond issue failed to provide more, more uh, funds for the library, Daniel C. Ganey of the, <coughs> of the Jostens Corporation uh, gave donated money to the library so that it could be modernized. At that point is when the, the marble around the fireplace was added and it used to be a brick fireplace kind of like the outside of the building. But he also um, helped to modernize the, the, the checkout desk, the circulation desk, and helped to um, just get the library ready for another 50 years of use at that point. Uh, more recently, in the 2010s, we received money from Bremer Foundation to, to update, to put more internet access available for people to use their computers so that the building, even though it was built 120 years ago, is still very uh, adaptable to people's needs. This is the, the third floor of the library. We're in the Ganey Room right now. The Ganey Room, again, was named for Daniel C. Ganey. Um, he was a real generous man to the library. He recognized its importance. And Jostin's building, of course, was just across the street from here, too. Uh, when the library was first built, there were skylights above this section of the library. Uh, but because of uh, continued issues with, with leaking, they were eventually closed off. But we have three attics here in the library. We have two on each side above the, the wings. Another one. And then the third, library, the third attic is located right about here, the entrance to it. Um, that one has been totally cleaned out, unfortunately. The other two still have some treasures in them, though. And We'll see what happens to those in the future.
The Ganey Room was a community center for many years. Uh, here's a photograph that we have. We had, used to have an art collection, part, part of which was provided by the Carnegie Corporation. The library was not a Carnegie library, but we were able to receive several grants from them to, um, in, to increase the artistic nature of the community. Um, so we have a picture of Mary Gontaric here. The, the room up here was also used for piano recitals. The piano that used to be up here is now at the Art Center. It's named Helen. And it's, it asks Sylvan sometime when you go up to the Art Center. Uh, we, there also were community education classes held here. Movies were shown. And when the library is open again, they'll be shown again, we hope. Um, we have, have added a new state of the art movie system up here so that uh, businesses or, or individuals can use use the room for their their needs. Sylvan tells the story of when they had to get the piano out of this room. They decided that the art center could use it more easily. So they took the legs off of the grand piano, and this is a full grand, not a baby grand, and they carried it down the fire escape steps. And Sylvan still talks about the nightmare as it, bring, it brought him. So, um, we are going to head to the basement of the library now. This is the former children's room from when the library was first built. Actually, this was the second children's room in the state of Minnesota for libraries. Um, the first children's room was at the St. Paul Library, and then Oatana was a couple years later, about 1903. Uh, women's groups in Oatana thought that the children needed their own space, so the, this, the children's room was, was refurbished, uh, made, it was kind of just a basement before that, but then they added shelving and brought more books in. It would be open after school so children could come in. Story time started about then, too, and they were, um, they've been popular ever since. I have a couple photographs of children in the children's room. It was pretty, pretty basic. You can see this is probably from the 1920s or 30s. And then this one shows the fireplace that was here in the children's room. I like the picture of the brother reading to his little sister, I assume. The fireplace has been covered over, and again, this was in the 1950s, this was remodeled too. And one of the things that, that was done was a little seating area was placed here. I remember a, a round table that fit perfectly there, that was where the Christmas tree would be, and then there were display cases up, um, in the corners of the seating area. And this, over the years, was crazily packed. It was packed so tight you could hardly find what you needed. Or they'd have to put some things out in the hallway here in downstairs until we were able in 1992 to get the, the new addition to the library. The rooms down in the basement have had different uses over the years. Right now this one is used for our cleaning, cleaning people. But if you come back in closer, keep coming, we're going to show you the real foundation of the library. Watch your head. There you can see the limestone uh, that was the original part of the library. The things have changed over the years, but there you can, you can see pretty well how that was built. Somewhere in the, in the basement of the library was the Jaeger bird collection. We're kind of uncertain exactly where it was, but here's a picture, picture of Mr. Jaeger showing an owl, eagle that he had taxidermied. And there were also other pictures of, of uh, the whole collection of birds that he had. If you go to the Otana Senior High School, you'll still see some of these birds in the science rooms. So they are still around. But come on back, I want to show you what else we have hidden away. Mm -hmm. 
here is the vault of the library. Unfortunately, the door of the vault is gone, the big door that you would have had to open. But the inside doors are still here. There we go. All right, we're going to head over to the new 19, well, the 1992 section of the library. Now remember how small that children's area was? You can imagine how exciting it was when this was, at, when this was added and we were able to expand. Oh, and look, it's Darla, the children's librarian. Hey, Darla. Did you want to say anything to our, our guests? That's, oh, could you show us the book drop? Oh, that would be great. Okay, let's follow. When you return your books from outside, they land in one of these bins. And right now we're sorting them onto carts so that we can quarantine the books for 72 hours. So that's three days that your books have to sit here. So, but there's no fines. So don't worry about that. But, so we have a kid's cart and we have an adult cart. I don't know why. Here's this, the program area. You'll notice the computers. Some of the computers are turned on because you can come in now and make appointments and come and use a computer. If you're under 16, though, you need to be with your parents, okay? But this is also where we've had our story times. We've had big programs, like two, 200 people in this one room. That won't be happening for a little while, but we hope to, that our regular programs will be able to start at some size before too long. You can come and make appointments for the computers, and you can also come in at, and to make appointments to uh, come and look for books and movies and all those things that you've been wanting to read. We're in the new section of the library on the second floor now, and you'll notice that there are also protective barriers up here. And there's Brandon. Yay, Brandon's <laughs> back. We're glad to have, have him and be, that we can be open for visits. A point. The Owatonna Public Library is part of the library system for all of Steele County. Uh, the, that includes the Blooming Prairie Branch Library where I get to work full time. But we have been a county library for many years. When there was a, a very well-known librarian, Maud Van Buren, who had two different times that she worked here at the, at the public library, and she spent, she really wanted to make sure that people outside of the city limits would also get services. So she instituted a traveling bookcase. Bookcases. This one is located at the Ellendale Post Office in 1927. Um, they would go, new bookcases would be sent out on the trains and people would go to their church at certain times or to the post office or to schools and then they'd be able to get their own books. In more recent years, we've had bookmobiles through Selco and our own bookmobile that we, that we um, had so that people out in the country could also receive the, the, the materials. Now we're going to head to the staff area and excuse the mess, we're a busy place. Lots of books and things to deal with. If you look straight ahead you can see the original wall of the, of the library and we're going to go into the director's office and here is Mark Blondo. Hello everyone. Hello Nancy. Uh, hello friends of the library. Um, welcome to the office. It's uh, my beautiful office, a little cluttered, uh, so I apologize for the mess, but 
I love showing off my office. As you can see, we have some of the brickwork uh, from the original building here. Um, it really adds a lot to, uh, uh, to my office and it's just a great conversation piece. Uh, just a little bit more, we, we'd love to have you back in the building. Uh, we're slowly starting to let people back in. So all of that information is on our website and our social media. Um, but I'm gonna let Nancy tell you some more secrets of the library. We are almost done with our tour here at the library. We have some artwork that you can come and enjoy. But I do need to tell you that we still aren't open for you just to drop in any time. You need to call 774-7006 to make an appointment to come in to either use the computers or to browse for, for your items that you'd like to check out. Now we have a special surprise for you if since you've made it this far in the video if you come in when you come into the library for your browsing or your computer appointment and if you go to the desk and say mod as in mod van buren you will get a copy of the, the library history um, that's Oatana public library free to all and we hope to see you we hope that things will get a little bit more back to normal but thanks for joining us for Secrets of the Library.